In this section, we're going to talk about dimensions. And dimensions are a feature in Business Central that allow you to attach tags or attributes to ledger entries. So for example, the general ledger entries, the customer ledger entries, the vendor ledger entries, item ledger entries, you can attach tags to help you be able to do financial uh, accounting and uh, statements for various uh, types of things that you might want to look at. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go out to dimensions and as you can see there are already some predefined in the Kronos database and one of these for example is uh, called departments and you might want to be able to have an income statement by department so you could have an income statement for your sales department for your production department and so on and so forth. So here they've defined a dimension called department and then we can look at the values that they have on this. So the, the values that they have for this particular dimension are administration, production, and sales. And I could have as many of these as I want to create. By just simply clicking new, I could add a new dimension in here value. And so I can then, for something like an income statement, I could get an income statement that would show me what my expenses are for the for administration, for the production area, and for the sales area. So I'm going to click New to put a new value under this department dimension. We're going to call it Marketing. And that's all that's really involved in just setting up a new dimension value under any of these various um, uh, dimensions that we have out here. Since dimensions are used to help segregate my financial information out to make more sense of it, we can look at some of the other things that are here. So for example, we might have a business posting group. And if we take a look at the business posting group values, we see that we have home, industrial, and office. So perhaps I'm interested in separating my sales out to see how much of uh, how much sales go to uh, home, uh, to industrial, or to office customers. I could also have customer groups. And if we take a look at something like this, we can see that we have large, medium, and small business. So perhaps I want to get my business seg segmented by uh, the type of business, whether it's large business, medium, or small. I can use a, a customer group of this type. And then we actually can create hierarchical sorts of um, structures within dimension. So if we take a look at the dimension for this area, for example, you'll see here that we now have Europe, we have America, and then we have categories under those. So we have Northern Europe, and then we have the rest of Europe, and we have Total Europe, and then America, we have North and South. And what they've actually done here is set up beginning totals and standard transactions that you can actually do, um, that you can actually use, and then ending totals. And this is totaling line 20 through 45 to give us a total of all of the business that's being done in these two specific dimension codes. And they're calling that Northern Europe. So these dimensions can be very um, useful and very powerful depending upon how, how you want to structure your business. Another feature of dimensions are that since we have all of these various dimensions, we may not want them to all work in exactly the, the in, in harmony with one another. We may want to limit some of the things that these dimensions can do. So if I go up here and search for dimension combinations, I get another screen that I can look at here. And what this is doing is it's disp displaying all of my uh, dimensions horizontally and vertically. And in this array, everything is marked uh, virtually. There are, there are no marks here. So let's just take a look at how some of this works. So with my business group, for example, or my area here, maybe I want to segregate my salespeople so that certain salespeople can only sell into certain areas or get credit for doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select limited here. No limitation means that any salesman could do um, transactions into any area. Limited means that uh, I can select who can do what or how the limits will work. And blocked, of course, means that you can't do a combination of these two uh, different dimensions. So once I've selected limited here, I can drill into this. 
It says, do you want to see a list of values? And I can say yes. And what this is doing, it's presenting my salespeople across the top and down the side, it's presenting the various um, uh, areas that we have. So for example, if I wanted Joe to be able to not do anything in North and South America, I can come in here and block them and this salesperson and cannot be uh, set up to do any transactions in the uh, Americas. So they are only doing transactions in Europe. And I could take this salesperson and I could come in here and basically block them from doing sales in Europe. And then they would only be able to do things in, uh, in America. So these combinations that I can set will limit the kinds of combinations of dimension values that we can get that are posting into all of these different areas. And when I pick close here, these, this says limited, and it means that underneath this, there are some combinations of salespeople and areas that have been selected that will um, not allow the salesperson to do uh, business in these particular areas. So now that we have a, an understanding of how to set these dimensions up, um, how can we actually apply them? And this seems kind of complicated. We got all of these things, and how can this actually sort of work in harmony for us here? So what actually happens is that if we go out to a customer account here, for example, let's take this customer, and we go to related customer dimensions, we can actually set up dimensions for this customer. So this customer is actually set up as a, uh, a North American customer. Uh, they're in the group small, so this is their small business, and their department code by default is sales. And anytime we do a transaction with this customer, these dimensions will automatically uh, flow through to the documents that we create. Let's take a look at vendors here for a moment. I can do the same thing with vendors. So I can have a vendor, and when I set my vendor up and I go to related dimensions, you'll see that I have area and business group set up. So again, this is North America, and this is an industrial customer. And these dimensions will automatically flow through when I create a purchase order to the header of the purchase order document. And from there, of course, any time that I'm using them, they will flow on through to the ledger entries, the general ledger, the customer ledger entries, all of those sorts of things. Let's take a look at this item. And the same kind of thing applies here. If I look at the dimensions for this, this is set up as a product dimension and it's chairs. So I might want to see what kind of sales dollars am I doing on chairs, on tables, on uh, um, lamps and so on and so forth. So th these dimensions are set up to flow through to documents. So let's go take a look at a purchase order that I've created here quickly. And uh, when, I, when we look at this purchase order, what you'll see is a couple of things. First of all, on the header of the document, if I go to related uh, document, oops, order and dimensions, you'll see that this vendor had these two um, dimensions set up on the vendor card and they flowed through to the header of the um, purchase order. So that when I post this, I'll automatically have these dimensions flowing through to the, um, the transactions that are created, the ledger entries. If we take a look at the line items down here, this line, for example, if we go into here and we take a look at the dimensions on this, what we'll see is that we have the two dimensions from the header that flow down to the lines, plus we have the product dimension that says, hey, this is a chair. So it's going to tag this as a chair, and from our sales information, we can see sales for chairs because it has this attribute attached. If we look at the next one that's here, and we look at its dimensions, what we're going to see is that this one is set up. Again, the, the two dimensions flow down from the header, from the vendor uh, card. And then under products, this is tables. So this happens to be a conference table. So that once we have this configured, then these dimensions will flow automatically through our system without doing any additional work. And it will, it will automatically segregate our sales by large business, by uh, local, by area, North America, Europe, wherever it may be, as well as by products. So setting these up, it's a little bit tedious to set them up, but once they're set up, 
the dimensions automatically flow uh, to the ledger entries. Let's take a look at the net effect of having these dimensions on things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of here. I'm going to go to the chart of accounts. And in the chart of accounts, I'm going to look for a single account, which is rent expense. And as you can see, we have a total out here. This is a demo database. It doesn't have a lot of stuff, but we have a total out here of $21,500 that we're looking at. And what I can do is I can filter these totals by my dimensions. So, for example, I have a department filter here. And these numbers at 21.5, if I go in here and I select administration, all of a sudden they change to $1,500 because it's filtering now by this tag that's on the GL lines for administration. Here's production, 52.50. And if we go down to sales, we can see that it's $750. So the rent expense is being allocated to my different departments and I can literally filter the data in my general ledger based upon these dimension codes that I have. To illustrate for you that these translate to reports as well, we're going to look at a trial balance and uh, let's take the detailed trial balance and we're going to do this just for our 60100 account, which is rent expense. It's the only one that I just want to look at to illustrate this. I'm going to put in a date filter here, period 1 through period 12. So that will be this the entire year of, uh, of 2021. And then I can here, I can put in a department filter, for example. So with a uh, department filter, I'm going to leave this blank to begin with. If I preview this, what you see is the uh, balance that we had originally here of 2150 because this is the entire uh, balance of this account. But if I wanted to look at this just, for example, for uh, production, I could do that and it would filter this account out to the 5250 that we saw in the general ledger. And so it's, uh, it's limiting this just to whatever department code that I select here. Let's do admin, and you'll see these balances change. So these dimensions are effective, and they work on uh, all of the reports in the general ledger uh, for filtering things. They work, very, they work everywhere out here. A couple of uh, things that we need to talk about related to working everywhere. There are eight shortcut dimensions that I can set up, basically. So I'm going to go to the uh, General Ledger Setup. And in the General Ledger Setup, there is a section called Dimensions. And there are uh, eight shortcut dimension codes that can be configured in here, two of which are called Global Dimensions. So. This is Global Dimension 1 here is Department. Global Dimension 2 is Customer Group Code. These are also the first two shortcut dimensions that are in here. But the significance of this is that the Global Dimensions actually are shown as fields in all of the ledger entries. So on the General Ledger, uh, the GL entries, the Customer Ledger entries, all of the ledger entries will show these two. The others are not visible on the ledger. They're there, but they're just not visible. In order to change this, um, what you actually have to do is go up here to, if you want to change global dimensions, you have to go to this change global dimension field. And you would, this is where you select the one, the, the dimensions that you want to be your global dimensions that will show up everywhere. So um, although they're there, they, they are not, um, not necessarily visible on the ledger entry line uh, as, an, as a single entry. So let's uh, see what this qualification is that I was talking about. If I go to the chart of accounts and I take a look at, uh, for example, the accounts receivable. There are the department code. This is global dimension one and this is global dimension two are actually shown on the line here. And if I try to personalize this layout <clears throat> and I look for additional fields, what you'll find is that none of those other dimensions that we have are available to pick and put on this line. However, they're actually, um, they're actually on the line. So if I look at the entry and I go to dimensions, you can see that I also have an area. 
I have a customer group. Here's my department. These are the two that are showing, but I also have an area and a salesperson on this. If I close this up and I go to this next line and I look at the dimensions, you'll see that here I have, again, I have the, uh, the, the same two that we had before, but area, business group, so on and so forth. And here I also have a, a salesperson department. So I have five different dimensions that are attached to this transaction. So these dimensions are actually attached to every uh, ledger entry, but only the global dimensions are visible when you're looking at the actual detail line. Uh, the other dimensions are available to report by. So I can certainly do reporting, all the filtering works. They just simply are not visible on the actual uh, ledger entries. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, remember to click below and subscribe for more.